I hopefully have a short, sweet, and upbeat COVID-19 presentation today. Um, our cumulative cases in Itasca are 10,816. Um, again, not including, not including um, some of the school-based testing and the over-the-counter testing. Um, our 14-day case rate is a quarter of what we saw two to three weeks ago. We're at 43.2. Our peak um, January, February was 172. Um, on our deaths, um, have, we've still been having pretty consistent um, death rates from COVID. We're at 139 total numbers, and that's six more again in the last two weeks since I was here previously. Um, vaccine, vaccinations, um, Itasca County residents completing their series, 25,358. That's 58.9% of our population. Um, Public Health is offering, um, we are offering weekly clinics through February, um, alternating between Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. And we have our final one this week, 9.30 to 11, and that's a Moderna clinic. And then in March, we'll decrease to just two clinics a month, um, one Moderna, one Johnson & Johnson. And of course, boosters are still recommended. Anyone 12 and old, older, five months after the initial series, or if you're 18 and older and received Johnson & Johnson at least two months following that series. And our hospitals, clinics, pharmacies are still offering vaccinations. Um, appointments are usually available online, but you can also make some phone calls to make those happen as well. Um, public health primarily is the, um, the group that offers Johnson & Johnson. Um, Omicron is the active variant in Minnesota. Um, you know, we're seeing, again, that surge come down statewide. However, we are keeping an eye on the um, BA2 um, sequencing of the Omicron variant to see if that um, affects us here in the next two to three weeks. Keeping an eye on that um, across the country and in Minnesota and here. So um, we're hoping it doesn't turn out like this fall winter, hoping it'll just slow our decrease versus cause another surge. Um, for us and our healthcare folks. Um, schools, um, right now, they've all moved to um, recommended masking and decreased some of their mitigation. And as our cases come down, so are theirs. Um, so that's where the schools are at this week. Um, vaccine breakthrough cases, um, much tougher to reflect in data due to rapid antigen testing. However, the severe cases, we're still able to have a pretty accurate reflection of. Um, we've had 119 of the 25,000 plus folks vaccinated who were hospitalized um, after um, having a vaccination and having COVID, and 21 died from COVID um, post-vaccination. Um, yeah, um, as far as reinfections, um, we have some data on that, but there are people that have had COVID two and three times. And so um, just know that just because you've had it once doesn't mean that you will not um, have it again. Um, hospitals, the last couple of weeks, they've been recovering from the surges, both with their staffing and um, their bed availability. Again, they're very day by day when they provide us updates. It's um, we're okay today is pretty much what they say. They don't um, move too much beyond that. And I don't blame them one bit. It's been, it's been touch and go. Um, we still have our call line. Um, we're answering it from nine to one Monday through Friday at 327-6784. Um, we do plan to scale this back again um, in the coming months to less days a week. And at some point we'll likely move that um, just to our regular incoming calls to public health. Um, and that should happen pending nothing um, too emergent happens. That should happen probably by May. 